Now on the big KTZZ, here comes the Spud Man. He goes down easy. He calls to you who the social outcast. Yes, you who are rejected. He wants you. He needs you. He loves you. Now on the big KTZZ, here comes the Spud. of KTZZ in Seattle, Washington, and still hiding safely within the box. The current leader in total court dependencies, the head cheese meister of the Northwest. He ain't heavy. He's our brother. So, let's get ready to rumble. Here he is, Spud Goodman. Greetings, I am Spud Goodman. The program you're about to see is 100%, that's correct, 100% free of any socially redeeming value. Hey, so put your sense of PC on hold for me, all right? Thank you. Uh, this is my sister. Uh, your name is? Sophia Goodman. Thank you. Did you forget? No, I, I wanted to give you a little bit more airtime. Oh, thank you. Hey, Spud, remember when I told you a while back about that great job I had working for Slade Gordon? Yes. Well, I don't know what caused all the ruckus, but now I not only so lost the continue, gig, continue. but I have these men in dark suits following me everywhere I go. I mean, all I did was get on the air and mention that I had this fabulous job. I was making huge amounts of money doing nothing but modeling these kind of strange costumes that Slade and his friends were, were choosing for me. There was the uh, dental hygienist uniform, and then there was the hazardous waste workers gear. I mean, I must admit that their choices were a little strange, but I figured I could humor them. Gosh, and then, so, okay, what happens? You told me nobody was watching this show. I figured they were harmless. I mean, it wasn't like they were hitting on me or anything, Spud. God, you know, now I don't have a job. I mean, what am I supposed to do for spending money? Spud, you know, this is really irritating. I cannot go Stop back to exotic guy. dancing anymore. I mean, not after I tried to All form right. that adult right. entertainers union. Yeah, okay, super. Oh, the AFL and CIO almost accepted us until they found yeah. out that oh, I fine. was fired and run out of the business. All right, super. You now I know how the Wobblies felt. All right, super. Spud, I have to wrap what do you think of me words. being a Mary Kay girl? I think that's a possibility. Well, I know so Hold much about thought. cosmetics. Right, right now we're going to take a brief break. We'll be back in a second. The Mary Kay thing has a possibility. So, I mean, I, I could Microsoft see Microsoft is hiring. I've heard that you also. Know, I've right. got the skills. Right, I go. just let's need go. the let's right break, position. Please. Thank you. Your love, Teddy Bell. Put a chain. Mail call. This is from Lisa Kutchner of Bremerton. Dear Spud, I suppose I kind of like your program. You remind me of a man I keep seeing in my nightmares. Well, Lisa, any resemblance to that guy is purely coincidental. Um, a lot of people tend to blame me for the demons that torment them, and it's just not fair. I want to state that. Got this letter from Stephen Bogford. Uh, of Medina. Dear Spud, I don't see why more people don't watch your program. I look forward to Saturday nights at 11 all week long, and I will try my hardest to bring new viewers to the program. Well, Steve, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for that... Uh for that effort that you're going to lend me. But I will tell you this, I will never ever ask my followers to take a Kool-Aid break. I got this from Timmy the Lunar Sex Oven. He's sending me some really strange stuff. And on this particular piece of correspondence, he wants to set Jeff Larson on fire. Timmy, as I've told you on other occasions, we all must live in a civilized society and follow the rules of such. Thank you. Last letter from Paul and Jane, recovering Catholics from Minneapolis. They like the show. What do you know? Well, thank you. Keep the mail coming. What was your non-sexual dream in the last calendar year? I replaced Axl Rose in Guns N' Roses. I was served breakfast by accordion Jill. I quit my job and became a cowboy. I was served breakfast in bed by accordion Joe. <laughs> uh, non-sexual dream? Um... Oh, I haven't had one. I don't even recall that I ever dreamed about non-sexual things. Who's Accordion Joe? All right, all right, all right. Please say hi to Russell Wilson and Michael Jackson impersonator. Michael? Michael? Russell? What the hell you go by? 
Anyway, let, let's talk about the biz, about the interview. I got to talk about the interview. That's why we have you down here today. Now, did, was it kind of like an, an out of body experience for you? I mean, I, obviously, it's kind of weird even asking you these questions because who really cares what a what an impersonator has to say about his own sex life or I don't know, like his own plastic surgery? I don't really care, and I'm sure my viewers I, don't care. Do you mind if I move around? It's a medication. No problem. Okay, now super. Now, what was it like? Was it really kind of weird to watch the interview itself? I mean, was it kind of strange? No, I didn't find it strange. Oh, no, come on, no, because you know, I myself. I mean, I, I was cringing there. Spe you know, Oprah is a hard-hitting journalist. She hit him between the eyes with some really, really hardball questions. What do you think? You know, I really, when I, when I got really uncomfortable, excuse me, when I got really uncomfortable was when, when she hit him with the V question, you know, when he had to go to the prop girl, Brooke Shields thing. I mean, that, that, that was tough. That was tough. I had to flip the channel, regain my composure until I came back to it, you know. <laughs> Early 30s being a virgin. I mean, I'm a gentleman, too. My son, I realize it's tough to follow in your old man's steps. I'm one of a kind. An original, a sexual machine. Don't hurt yourself, trying. Announcing right at this time that I am a candidate for the United States Senate. I have thought long and hard about this, and it's time for me to ask not what my country can do for me, but what I can do for my country. I mean, it's very important to all of us, and I'm going to run for this office, and I have it, that they also, I realize that, Spud, you hate politicians almost as much as you hate attorneys, and I'm not gonna get you started on how some of these attorneys are also politicians, but Spud, darling, I want you to know that I feel that I can do this. I have a place where the Sephola Goodman was born to lead. After all, don't forget, I was your Cub Scout den mother. And I've met Slade Gordon, the Republican. I mean, how hard could the job be? He fired your sister because he didn't like what she was wearing. I mean, how bad Come on, Mom. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on. really, really isn't the greatest or the smartest or anything like that. Mom's dragging her what? She's bringing the show down. I really want you to know something, but I have started an exploratory committee. That's great, And they have told me that 78... So, I may be a dummy, but at least my hair is not falling out in Are you a current member of the hair club? Do you want Cy Sterling's home phone number? I want you to go underground with this okay, campaign. Fine, fine. Don't talk to me. Don't okay, endorse fine. me. Okay, and fine. you don't even have to see me in public. Okay. I mean, we can't be together. Listen, my opponents are going to be Hey, it's my show. Can you. I get a word in? So, I really want what? you to know that this is important. <laughs> okay. And please, don't even endorse me. Fine. I won't endorse you. Now, let's talk about the rides. I mean, I mean, who wants to have a Ferris wheel in their backyard? I mean, it would be really cool if they had, like, a zipper or a hammer, like the Enterprise, you know, the really big thing at the fair where everybody pukes. Now, that would be cool to have in your backyard. But, but I, I mean, Mikey's Mikey's rides are lame. But anyway, uh, right now, I guess we've got to go to some music here. So uh, let, let's do that and then give me a chance to regain my composure. This is a thrill. we got NCA recording artists, best kissers in the world. And this, they got a new CD coming out. It's called Puddin'. I don't have it in my hand, but it's on its way. It's in the mail. That's what they say. I like to check. So uh, right now, let's check them out. Best kissers in the world. I want 
People say I look like the actor in the crying game. Finally, now I have found fame. And the guy isn't lame. Not like that dork Corey Haim. No, this person is not tame, but it's kind of a shame that I've never seen the crying game. All right, you know, you know what Michael should have done? What Michael should have done is hire one of those stunt Michaels he used at halftime at the Super Bowl, you know, and, and let that person sit there and be humiliated. You know what I mean? Instead of having to undergo it himself. Sam, you, you're gesticulating. Spud, yes, recently I mentioned my intimate conversation with fellow weather person Jeff Renner. Well, there's going to be some bold changes in his life. I think this town should be ready for having his socks knocked off because he's going to have his hair parted on the other side of his head. And I said that that's not enough of a change to get a spot on a national show like the Today Show. Not Pick like Steve tape, Poole, who's got to get on the Good Morning America show, and Jeff Renner got all covetous of his position there. He says he's just as cool as, and cute as Steve Poole, but Steve, of Poole, opinion. Steve Poole doesn't even have a meteorology degree like Jeff Renner yeah. does. Yeah. So I saw it, said that, Jeff, you need to do some drastic things with your hair because it's so stale. You need to get a perm. And he got all kinds Jeff of Renner mad at me. Jeff Renner getting a perm? And, yes, and he got all kinds of mad at me. So you know, he's not talking to me. He's really hurting me. And so right. Jeff, Jeff, yeah. if you're watching me out there, please forgive my remarks about your stale hair. I had your best interest in my so we'll go out for espresso. Call me, and okay, I will even have cocktail peanuts. I'll buy Thank you. Jeff. Right now, I want to jump to an interview I did recently uh, with Michael Cage. Not to be confused with uh, Michael Jackson. Michael Cage uh, from Sales Supersonics. We uh, we spent some quality time together. Let's let's bump out to Michael. All right, thanks. They got the ball, so let's take it away. They got the ball, so let's take it away. They got the ball, so let's take it away. All right, Michael. Forget about basketball. Let's let's talk about the nautical situation, the high seas. All right. Now, you're a man who spends a great deal of your life on the water, correct? Absolutely. Okay, uh, at what age did you first get your sea legs? Well, I started about uh, nine years old, watching the tugboats on the Mississippi River. I wasn't your average huck Huckleberry Finn, but I was your cage man, you know? All right, and Michael, this is off the record, but do you wear Old Spice? <laughs> no, I don't. And in fact, I never did. And I don't even like the smell. <laughs> Now, what, what's your favorite kind of bait? I've always preferred the kind of bait that you could actually eat yourself, like a cheese ball or uh, marshmallows or Reese's Pieces. What do you think? Huh. My favorite bait would probably be, uh, well, you know, since I've been up here in the Northwest, my favorite bait is salmon. <laughs> Whenever I can catch them, I'm still learning. Now, Michael, what is the weirdest thing you've ever caught with a fishing pole? With a fishing pole? Oh, uh, let's see. I once caught an old boot, you know, I thought it was real valuable. It looked like it was from a Spanish expedition, but it turns out it was just a shredded, you know, old flooded rubber boot. That, uh, that's all, so no luck there. Still searching for that great find, you know. 
Um, now you obviously are, are kind of the yachting type. I, I'm going to ask you this question. I know I'm, I'm going to venture forth with this. Uh, when you dress up, when you go out on the water, are you more into like the Thurston Howe look or the Gilligan look? <laughs> I'm more, I think I'm more like the Gilligan, <laughs> definitely. You know, plain and simple, throw it on and go. <laughs> Now, uh, this is the last question. The next time you do go out on the boat, would you mind if maybe I brought some friends and family members along? We'll, like, bring maybe maybe a six-pack and some chips. Sure, you know, and then if, 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 if everything works out well, maybe we can take Eddie Johnson. He can't swim. He's afraid of the water, but I'm still trying to get him on my boat. All right, well, we'll make a day of it. What do you think? I just, I just put my bikini on, and I get out there and look good. I don't need to get on a boat or in the water. I'll bring my thong. All right, super. There you have it, Mr. Michael Cage and a cameo by Mr. Eddie Johnson. The plastic surgery. Now, come on, now, Russell, we gotta talk about this plastic surgery thing. You know, if, if Mikey wants to have a number two uh, lead pencil nose like Morgan Fairchild, that's his call. That is his call. I mean, somebody could say, hey, Spud, you turned your back on your heritage by carrying this damn spatula around. I mean, am I right or am I right? But hey, the, the bleaching thing, the bleaching thing. Now, come on, if Mikey doesn't watch it, he's gonna tie dye his face with those chemicals, and I'm serious about that. I really am. Well, the skin disease, no way. LaToya busted him. She busted Spud, him big time Spud, in a family scam. On. Spud, she ought to know if there's Spud, a disease know, in the family. I know you think the Seattle Weekly is, Weekly is purposely ignoring you, denying your quest to be on the cover, but get real, Spud. Yes, they are, by the way, now Come that you on, brought it up. Come on, they only put major talents on the cover. There's no way in hell they're going to disgrace their people with your ugly face on there. They've got standards. They're ugly is a, a subjective term. Culture. They have a, a respect for the finer things in life, Spud. All right? You're a nobody to them. I have friends at the Weekly, and they consider you irrelevant. They're ranting. Your rantings aren't going to phase them because you're a nobody. All right? Okay, yeah, they fine. have an agenda up there, finer restaurants, and there's no way okay, that you fine. Are have you a done? room on because their agenda for go. white trash like you. Go sniff some glue right you, this you second. You have better right luck this getting... Second. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to jump out to the field. Get that camera out of the hell out of my way. Let's go out to the field. I don't know what we got. Hopefully, we got something more interesting. You. This, is it, exit that man right now, please. Thank you. Security, thank you. I don't know if I feel real comfortable talking about this particular subject with you. But if you cannot trust your therapist, who can you trust? How do I know you're not going to share this with your colleagues? Maybe write some paper in, in a psychiatric journal. Our conversations are strictly confidential. This is not easy, I gotta tell you. It's very, very embarrassing. Let your guard down, Spud. You're somebody that wants to help you. Okay, I I've had these feelings about him for a very long time. Feelings of love, all right? He's a very amazing man. I've been thinking, maybe he's the, the father I always wanted and never got to have. Now, who is this man you adore so much? Now, you promise. You have to promise you're not going to laugh here. Certainly. Okay, Dan Lewis. Dan Lewis, the news anchor on Como. He's had a major impact on my life. And I've never met the guy. This is really weird, I know, really weird. But he consumes my thoughts. How weird is this? Is this really weird or just kind of weird? I wouldn't know, Spud. Actually, my feelings about Dan Lewis continue to fluctuate from love to hate to love. He's really messed up my head, but I've been thinking, maybe I should write a letter to him and disclose my feelings. What do you think? <laughs> Not at this time, Spud. I need to take a... We need to take a quick break here. I need to make a few calls. I'm Accordion Joe. Do you find yourself on the outside looking in? Never get invited to those A-list parties? Here's your chance to stand out for the rest of the crowd. That's right, become an F-O-S, friend of Spud. All you have to do is send us self-addressed stamped envelope and we'll send you free bumper sticker, window sticker, and a limited edition of the Xerox lithograph of the Spud Goodman family. That's right, they're free. I'm an F-O-S. How about you?
The Spud Goodman Show cast, crew, and guests enjoy Capitol Hill's Rocket Pizza, 612 Broadway East, pizza with an attitude. Bud, I need your opinion on something. Fine, I know fine. you're adamantly against the use of Prozac. I hate the stuff. But my psychiatrist, Dr. Goebbels, has selected me to do a uh, never-before-done-on-a-human-being-before with this test. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, and the reason why I have been selected yes. for this test is because of my multiple personalities. Yeah. Like Besides being a fine gentleman, isn't he a great accordion player? Viewers out there who don't know what that means, that means hit. But I tell you what, it's going to, we're talking about super multi-strength, but on the super uber Prozac, okay? Oh. And he, he asked me if you would care partake in this little tip. Hell no. Thank you very much. Uh, Ralph, I want to tell you one thing. Yeah. I enjoyed this quality time we spent together today. I don't know what it was, but I felt a bond established, and I'd like you to, I'd like to have you to come back on my program anytime. Open door. The open door policy, I've never given that to anybody ever before. You're number one. You're the first guy, all right? Will you come back? All right, super. Right now, I want to say this is Spud. Goodman, I gotta wrap this baby. Be all you can be, and I mean that. I do mean it. Do I mean it? I mean it. Be all you can be. God bless and shout. Once again, MCA recording artist and a great band, best kissers in the world. Wish I had a caddy. Something about walking around that takes me far away. A trail of tears and birds leave alone. I'm tears passing air right through my mouth. I hope you sing along. She won't get under me. Spread Goodman's therapist. Please watch his show. It's it's important for his mental health. 